So you may not be able to tell just from the sign behind me, but I'm a huge fan of The Office. And one thing that always stuck out to me from that show was a comment made by my favorite character, Dwight Schrute. Yes, Dwight is my favorite. And it was about a grape peanut hybrid plant his brother was going to grow. And the tagline was, one plant, one sandwich. Well, now it's one you art, one you art. Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja, and this is an HD Zero VRX. No, it is not the HD Zero goggles. And I know that's very disappointing because those goggles are pretty amazing, but I've been an owner of an HD Zero VRX for a very long time. And something really cool has happened to HD Zero recently. It has gone open source with its firmware. You can download the firmware for not the VRX yet, but the goggles and the VTXs from GitHub because developers are actually open source working on it right now and they're adding some pretty darn cool stuff. And speaking of open source projects, Betaflight, it's an open source project too. And they are putting out the release candidate, RC1, first of many, I presume, of Betaflight 4.4. And if you bring these two things together, something really magical happens. Because if you have flown HD0 or you've looked at flying HD0, the way it's connected to your flight controller is very much like what an analog transmitter uses, except for you also have to use a UART for your MSP OSD. We have to have a full UART for the MSP OSD. We have to go into the command line and put stuff in there to get our MSP OSD to work. And then we have to have another, another TX, so half of another UART just to run smart audio if we want our flight controller to be able to control the HD0 VTX. That's a huge pain. And I did a video a while back about how to accomplish all of that with just the DJI port on your quad. But if you look at HD0 compared to the other digital options on the market, none of them require two UARTs to run. Well now, they don't because this didn't get an update, but the VTX in this got an update. This is the one watt freestyle VTX and the open source developers have added MSP VTX control, which is now part of Betaflight 4.4, which is in release candidate. And today I'm gonna show you how to get it all set up. But first, let me show you what to do. So you can see down here on my quad, I'm on race band eight. This is on my HD zero VRX four. Now I'm gonna use Express LRS to send a command to both my VTX without smart audio and my VRX to change to race band one. And there we go, I'm R1. And I didn't use smart audio to do that at all. I've only got one UART hooked up. And that is the beauty of this one plant one sandwich that the Betaflight devs and the Express LRS open source devs have cooked up for us wonderful people. We don't have to use smart audio anymore to change our VTX's channel. That means that if I set it in beta flight, it's not sending a smart audio command via a separate UART to my VTX to change channel. Or if you're using the backpack function like I am on my VRX and my quad and Express LRS, if you're using the VTX administrator in Express LRS to send channel change commands to your quad, it's gonna do all of that without smart audio. So you can just use one UART and then the power. But there's some caveats here we need to talk about before I get into how to make this happen. Just, just a few. Okay, so full disclosure, Betaflight 4.4, as of this video right now, is in release candidate one. And if you don't know what that means, it means that it's not yet stable enough to be released. This is basically the dev's first stab at Betaflight 4.4. I do not recommend that you go through this process and put all of your quads on Betaflight 4.4. Bad things could happen. All the bugs have not been worked out. They did add some cool stuff, but it is still in release candidate. So do this absolutely at your own risk. I cannot stress that enough. I'm gonna point out some parts of this process that really stress the difference between 4.3.2, because that's what my quad was running, and 4.4. But don't do it if you don't know what you're doing or you're worried about compatibility or potentially having problems. Now, at some point, 4.4 will fully release and this process will be fine. So if that's already happened, then continue on. Be happy and 4.4 is cool. If not, be very, very, very 
careful with this. Now as for the HD0 firmware, it will be very important that you're running the most recent version of firmware for your VRX, which I believe is 1109-2022, somewhere in there. It's an 11 version at the beginning. And you're gonna wanna make sure that's already on your VTX as well. And in my case, we're gonna be using the Freestyle VTX in my Mark V here, but this process will work with any of their VTXs because they all support MSP DisplayPort and therefore will all support MSP VTX control. And I'll show you to how to differentiate that when we get into it. Now, let's take a look at the things we have to go download in order to accomplish this. And first and foremost, we're gonna need a new version of Betaflight Configurator. So head over to Betaflight's GitHub page, go to releases, do not click 432 because that's not what we want. We wanna hit this little releases link underneath there. And you'll see 4.4.0 RC1 is the first thing that comes up. And this important note is very important. You need to install Betaflight Configurator 10.9.0. And that's because the pre-release 4.4 release candidates are not gonna be available to you in the current versions of Configurator that are supported. This is a release candidate version of Configurator as well. It is RC2, I believe, of Configurator as of this video. So just be wary, there could be bugs. I haven't found a whole lot of problems yet, but you might, so you wanna be very careful with that. Again, this is all release candidate firmware. I cannot vouch for how many bugs you're gonna find in the future, but we're gonna need 10.9.0 in order to pull 4.4. So go ahead and let's click that link. And if we just right click this here and open a new window, we will get the page for 10.9.0 release candidate two and then we'll wanna go down to the bottom to assets and then download the version that we're looking for. If you're on Windows, you're gonna want the Win64 installer and then, you know, whatever, if you're on something else, download what you need there and get that installed. Now, just a reminder, all of the other firmware we're gonna look at is not release candidate. It is full on release. So not release candidate, This, the rest of this stuff is completely valid. The only things that are wonky is the 4.4 beta flight release candidates and the 10.9.0 configurator release candidates. But now we're gonna head over to HG0's GitHub to pull the firmware for our VTX. And in their GitHub page, we're gonna go to HD0 VTX. We're gonna open that up, scroll down a little bit here till we see releases. Version 1.0.0 latest, we're gonna grab that. And inside here, you can see a bunch of different versions of this for different things. We have the Freestyle, both versions of the Race, both versions of the Whoop. And that basically covers all of their VTX hardware. Now again, for this one, I'm gonna be using a Freestyle VTX that has already been flashed with the 1106 2022 firmware from the HG0 downloads page because that is what is on my VRX. So I have matching firmware on my VTXs as well, but we're not actually gonna be flashing the VRX at all. We don't have to do anything to this to use the firmware from GitHub on our VTX. We're just gonna be flashing the VTX, but you will need the 1106 2022 version of firmware on your VRX in order to be able to talk to your VTX once we load this firmware up. So pull the right one for your board, download it, and uh, let's roll on to the next thing we need to get, which will be an HD Zero's download page, which looks like this. We're gonna scroll down to utilities here and VTX table. You wanna grab this VTX table.zip because when we flash 4.4, I'm gonna show you that it is actually much easier to not take your config diff over to 4.4 because some things really changed. So we're gonna actually reload the VTX table instead. So we're gonna need this file to load the VTX table. Now, if you are one brave soul, you can work through the errors you get in a config diff configuration dump onto your new 4.4 flight controller, but there are some caveats, especially in the ports tab. They changed a lot of the assignment numbers for the serial ports. So if you bring them from 4.3.2 into 4.4, it's gonna do weird things to your ports tab. And it's also gonna give you errors about too many PID profiles. It's gonna give you errors about your existing MSP display port configuration. Cause hint, that doesn't exist anymore. It is a single button now in configurator. I'll show you that later. And it's also gonna complain about a few other things like barometer hardware and yeah, it just, they changed a lot of the wording. So bringing a config diff over is not the best idea. So we wanna have this VTX table just to load back in. And you're gonna wanna take pictures of all of the pages in your current version of Betaflight. Just go ahead and screenshot all of them individually so you get all of your settings because you're gonna wanna put those back in whenever you get done with this because we're not gonna bring a config diff over 
from anything else. But I'll, I'll show you all that here in a minute. Just go ahead and download your VTX table. And now what we're gonna wanna do is take the SD card out of our VRX because we are gonna load our firmware on that and you're gonna wanna put it in something that your computer can read. For me, it's gonna be this little adapter and then pop this little jewel in your computer. It'll also be important if you are coming at this completely new to HD0 or for some reason have never done this before, uh, it will be very important that you have formatted the SD card inside of your VRX. Just go in the menu and clicky the thing and format your SD card while it's inside the VRX before you put it in your computer because that always seems to work better. And again, if you haven't already flashed the 1106 2022 firmware, you need to go ahead and flash that and unlock your Freestyle VTX, all the things before you move forward from here. So if you haven't done it, go ahead and do it. If you have done it, you already know what you're doing. You've done this before. So pop your SD card in your computer, like I said. And you'll see it come up with this normal movie and photo files here. Now we're gonna go grab the firmware from HD0 and mine is in downloads cause I'm basic. And it's right here, HD0 Freestyle. This HD0 TX.bin, we will copy it. And then we will put it directly in the root of our SD card. We will just paste it right on in there. And then we will go down here and we will eject our USB drive safely. And now we'll want to put our SD card back in the VRX module. And for this next part, you will need a LiPo to power your VRX. However, you do not need a LiPo to power your quad because your quad will be powered by the cable that is gonna connect those things together for flashing because HG0 does that, which is weird. But it looks like there's actually a request to have over USB flashing, so maybe someday. But for now, let's get our VRX and our VTX connected and get ready to power this VRX on. You wanna go ahead and connect your firmware flashing cable to the VTX like I have here, and then the other end goes in the old firmware flashing port underneath the bottom of the VRX down here on this side, and excuse all of my cable mess because since I'm recording this, I have a bunch of excess cables. Once you've got that good and seated in there, it is time to grab a LiPo and then just power up your VRX. And you can see now it is writing HD0 TX, write done, firmware update successfully. They still haven't fixed the word successfully. Come on, that's a really easy fix. Just, just fix successfully in the firmware flashing window. Come on, HD0. Eh. Anyway, let's, let's do what it says. So we'll just Unplug the VRX, you can see it went dark there, and I'm just gonna plug it back in for good measure. We should see an HD0 loading screen, but we may not get past it because we're still plugged into our quad. We haven't disconnected it at this point. Now that we see that HD0 load screen, let's go ahead and unplug the LiPo again. Oh, it went all the way through, but let's unplug the LiPo, and there we go. And then you can disconnect the flashing cable from your VRX and let it go. Just let this thing do what it does best which is get you low latency HD video because that's that's what it does best. Now that we have the VTX flashed, it's time to do the really hard part and flash Betaflight 4.4. <laughs> so let's go do that. Like I said before, you can do a config diff if you know how to do that in the CLI, you type diff all, you can do that. Absolutely you can. I will show you how to modify the diff to get the minimum impact to your quad whenever you load it in because there are some configuration options that don't exist in 4.4, so be very, very careful. But alternatively, what you can do is just screenshot all the pages in Betaflight Configurator. Make sure you have all of those settings written down somewhere, especially the ports tab because we will not be moving the ports tab at all. So you especially need a screenshot of your ports tab before you do this. Don't move forward without taking a screenshot of your ports tab. It will be gone. Uh, and your tune, it, you know, your tune's very important too, but we can actually get that put back on. The ports tab, we cannot. Make sure you do all that before we move forward with this next flashing part. And with my quad connected to Betaflight, no LiPo plugged in. Do not have a LiPo plugged in yet. You do not need it. You only need the flight controller powered. Safety first, children. I can see my flight controllers populated here in the pull down. So I'm gonna hit the update firmware button. Up here at the top, you might see this originally, but you wanna do show release candidates. You want to auto detect your board. Mine is a SpeedyB F7 V3. 
If it doesn't auto detect, find yours. And then you wanna pull this down. Wait a minute, it's not there. We have to pull this down first. We don't want release. We want release and release candidate. And we see we have a 4.4.0 RC1 version for this board. We do want to reboot sequence because we're not in bootloader mode right now. We want it to go there. And we want to go ahead and do a full chip erase because we don't want our config to follow us around. It just won't work. Full chip erase. You must full chip erase. It won't work if you drag your config over. Trust me. No, no go. All right. And then 4.4 gives us some cool options here. We're actually not gonna mess with this, but if you needed for some reason to minimize the size of the firmware, you could by taking some of these options out. Anyway, now that we have all of this selected, whatever your flight controller is, 4.4 RC1 and all of the cool bits, no reboot sequence is off and full chip race is on, we will load firmware online. It's gonna download our firmware and then we're gonna hit flash firmware. And this is the point at which you really hope you did all the stuff about the config backups and the screenshots that I told you. You cannot, you cannot do too much. There is no wrong answer. You can never do too much backing up of your stuff because now it's all gone. That little erasing thing did not lie. It's all missing. 100% of it's missing. It doesn't even know where any of your serial ports are right now. Congratulations. You have totally toasted your quad. No, but if you have all the stuff, we will get it back and I'll show you how. Mine just finished, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect to it and show you the very important next step. So mine has completed, as you can see down here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit connect. And then this is very, 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 I'm gonna say very a few more times, important. Always use apply custom defaults because that is what tells Betaflight where all your resources are. Basically the flash, just flashes the firmware for the MCU and all the configurated parts that are on that flight controller. But that apply custom defaults tells it where everything maps to on the pins on the MCU. So if you don't do that, you will be very, very screwed. So make sure you do that. Don't skip past it, read it and do it. Every of the times when you flash one of these boards. And it rebooted to apply those. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit connect again. This is totally fine. There's, there's a warning here, it's totally fine. Just hit close and you'll notice that every possible thing is gone about what you had in your quad. Everything, everything is gone. And now is the time to use those screenshots to get everything set up in all your tabs the way it was because we full chip erase this thing. So you have no configuration anymore. Go get it all set up the way it was. Very, very important that it all looks the same so that your quad acts the same when you get done. Now I'm gonna show you a diff from my Mark V that I got out of Betaflight 4.3 and show you how to adjust it a little bit and the things that are gonna go wrong if you load a diff because you can load a diff. There will be some errors, but you can load a diff. So let me go show you the things absolutely you must take out if you, will, if you want to load a diff and have it actually work for 4.4. So this is my diff file for 4.4, and there's a lot of stuff in here, but the things that absolutely must go, if you've resource remapped, that must go. That is not gonna work anymore. These serial configurations, that must go. That is not gonna work anymore. That is your ports tab, totally gone, so hopefully you got a screenshot of it. The VTX table, if you had one, will come over, but if not, I'll show you how to load it again anyway. Aux will work. Some of this stuff will work. The barrel hardware doesn't seem to want to work and the magnetometer hardware doesn't seem to want to work. So I'm just going to take those out of my config there. The DisplayPort serial down here, set DisplayPort MSP serial does not work because that's replaced with a checkbox now. And then set OSD DisplayPort device MSP, which we had previously for HD0, that doesn't work either. So I'm going to take that out. The profiles are just about the same except you only get three profiles, zero, one, and three for profile. And then for rate profile, you get zero through five. Well, you can't have more than three apparently in 4.4, so we get zero through three. And that is basically it. We're gonna save this. So we're gonna do a save as, and we're gonna rename it. You can see that I have my name diff modified here. So go ahead and save that. Now taking this stuff out of the diff will minimize the errors and things will still work if you use a diff and you take those sections out. You may run into sections in your configuration that I didn't cover. Just pay attention, I'll show you where to pay attention to all the red error stuff whenever it comes to it here in a minute. 
that's fine. But the sections I told you to take out will minimize the impact of that and it will let you load it up. Now, like I keep saying, the ports tab will be totally gone because if you take a ports tab from 4.3 and move it to 4.4, it will do really funny stuff and then you'll go to manipulate it and things will just go wonky. So you can't move a ports tab from 4.3 to 4.4 at the moment. Maybe some bacon ninja will make a tool for doing that at some point, but today's not that day. So we just took it out. Hopefully you got a screenshot because you're going to want the screenshot. I promise you. Anyway, now that you've got your modified diff, let's load that into your new version of Betaflight. So in the CLI tab, I'm going to load from file and I'm going to find my diff modified. I'm going to open that up. We'll get this little review window here. And this is where you can just double check that nothing that we talked about is still setting in here, going to cause some trouble. And then we execute. You'll notice some red scrolling by us here. When this gets done, we're gonna scroll up and look at everything that was read. And in mine, it doesn't like this OFD stat max. I guess these were changed in 4.4, but they're not critical to me, so I'm not gonna worry about that. It doesn't like my barrow, my mag hardware, my barrow hardware. I told you that earlier and I took them out, but I actually ran them again just to show you. It doesn't like those at all. It also, for some reason, doesn't like this resetting to defaults, this defaults no save command. It really hates it. <laughs> I'm not sure what's up with that, but because we have read, we have to manually save this. So we want to type the word save and hit enter. Our flight controller will reboot. And then we're going to get back in there and we're going to mess with the ports tab because something is going to be different about the ports tab than previous. And this is my ports tab as it was in my screenshot. So I set it back. I'm using UART1 for my MSP DisplayPort OSD. I'm using UART6 for my receiver and I'm using UART2 for my smart audio. Now what's gonna happen is we're no longer gonna use smart audio. We're gonna delete that. Where we have our MSP DisplayPort selected, so UART1 is the one I'm using for OSD, I'm gonna go down here to the peripherals and I'm going to select VTX MSP plus DisplayPort. So that will give us VTX control as well as our MSP OSD. All with a button click, no more CLI commands. Yo, happy days. So let's save that, it will reboot the flight controller, and then we're gonna validate that it worked. But there's a process for validating that it worked, um, because if you do it with the flight controller plugged into your PC before you plug the battery in, it ain't gonna work. But let's do that. Let's load up a VTX table, just for those of you who didn't carry a VTX table over, so you can see what that looks like. And then we're gonna boot it up and make sure everything functions. So after saving and rebooting, I've gone to the video transmitter tab, and this is where we're gonna load our VTX table, which looks like this, but rather than type it all in, we're gonna do it from a file. So let's go to where we downloaded our VTX table zip. You're gonna to wanna to right click that and extract all, let it extract, put it somewhere, and then you'll come out the other end with this set of stuff. You can see we have a freestyle, a race, all, all the things. We're gonna be using freestyles.json because that's what I'm using. So back in Betaflight, we're gonna load from file, and then we're going to go find our place where we put that stuff here. And I'm gonna pick freestyle.json, open. And there we go, it has loaded my VTX table and then we're just gonna hit save. And now is when you'll want to pick your band and channel and all those things that you, yeah, that you want to do. Because whenever the quad boots, it's gonna send those commands to the VTX and set everything up. And now we're gonna validate that the VTX is actually talking to the flight controller over MSP like it's supposed to. But in order to do that, what you wanna do is disconnect the USB from your quad. You cannot have a USB connected to your quad prior to booting up with a, a LiPo for the VTX because it already has the MSP connection to Betaflight Configurator. So it's already got it bound and it won't actually let the VTX talk MSP to the quad. So we're gonna boot the quad with a pack. And then once everything's booted up, we're going to plug our USB in. We're gonna connect to Betaflight again, and we're gonna take a look in the video transmitter tab. And with my quad booted from a pack, I'm gonna connect, go to the video transmitter tab, and you can see that VTX type MSP, device ready, yes, and it's setting all of the things it's supposed to be setting. Now I'm gonna disconnect and go ahead and unplug the pack from my quad. And that's it, you've replaced Smart Audio with MSP VTX control in Betaflight 4.4 and open source firmware from HD0 for your VTX, whatever model it may be. Now, before we are done, we're gonna plug everything back in. I'm gonna get my VRX out. I'm gonna boot the quad up with a pack 
I'm just going to look at everything and make sure that nothing is too crazy and everything is working. So let's get all that out. It's really good to go ahead and do a check. Now make sure again, you do not do this with a USB cable plugged into your drone. You wanna just do it between your goggles and VRX and the drone. Because if MSP has somehow taken over the connection, it will not send those commands to the VTX and things aren't gonna work right. And your OSD won't work either. So just make sure you have the quad with a pack plugged in, start up your VRX, start up your quad, and make sure everything is going. Let's do that with mine. And there we go, it looks like everything's working. You can see my fingers and my dirty, dirty rest of my studio, as well as my DisplayPort, OSD, and all of the things. So for me, that's the end. That's the end of it. But for you, it might not be. Some things may still not be working. So let me show you a couple tips and tricks. There's a really good chance that since Smart Audio has been replaced by MSP VTX control and we validated that in the video transmitter tab that you're actually able to change the channels and things. So if you change the channel in Betaflight or with your VTX administrator on your radio, it will probably work just fine. However, there's also a chance that your OSD doesn't work. Because I actually had this problem and I, I went and did a couple extra things and I tried this on a couple different quads and it worked in some and not others. So let me show you some very specific things just in case your OSD is no longer working that should get it back for you. So we'll get connected in Betaflight here and we're gonna head over to the OSD tab. So in the OSD tab, there's actually this new thing under video format that says HD and yours probably says auto or something else, probably auto, but we wanna set that to HD and then hit save. And once we've done that, we want to go into the CLI and we want to type set space OSD question mark. And you're going to get quite a few things. And what we're going to be looking for is OSP DisplayPort device. You see how mine says set OSP or OSP DisplayPort device equals MSP. We have all these options, none, auto. Yours might say auto here. If it does, you want to type in set OSD underscore DisplayPort, not that, underscore DisplayPort underscore, I keep doing it, device equals, not minus, I can't type, MSP, and then hit enter, and then hit save. Let your flight controller reboot, and then disconnect it from beta flight again, and try your tests again, because now I bet you it works. For some reason, it doesn't. And if you took that out of your diff originally, it's because it actually throws an error when you put it in the diff. So if you put set MSP DisplayPort device or set OSD DisplayPort device MSP, it don't work, it's, it has an error. So there's a good chance that it didn't take and you would not have known to put that in based on your screenshots either, unless you just off the top of your head already know how to do an HD0 installation, in which case that's a pretty standard practice. The thing you don't ever have to set again though is the, the serial number. So we used to have to set the MSP device serial number and you used to have to subtract one from the UART and put it in there. And it's very confusing for people. Thank goodness Betaflight has a preset in the presets tab to do it for older HG0 firmware. But with this one and Betaflight 4.4, you just select the one checkbox for MSP and then you go over to the devices side and you drop down VTX and it does MSP and DisplayPort all the same, so you don't have to set that ever again. But now everything should be working for you, and I hope it is, and I hope you enjoy it, and go out and send it, and just remember, Betaflight 4.4 is still in release candidate. This is not public production firmware. If you're doing this, you are testing. You are a tester. Now, if you are very familiar with Betaflight and all the things, and you're comfortable with being a bit of a tester, and maybe your drone falls out of the sky once or twice or does something funny that you don't expect, but that's perfectly fine because it's not your only quad, because you have a fleet of them like I do, then go out and have fun and test this. The other firmware we were using from HD Zero's GitHub is not pre-release firmware. It is open source released firmware. And all the other stuff we got from HD Zero's website is all the other stuff we got from HG Zero's website. It's been there, it is released firmware. Now, none of this is in the HG Zero manual because Betaflight 4.4 just isn't out yet, but it will be. And maybe if you're watching this video, Betaflight 4.4 has released and you can go do this with no harm at all. And maybe, like I said, some Bacon Ninja has made a converter for the CLI diff to tell you what is safe and what's not safe and what you should and shouldn't put in there. Maybe, I don't know. It's possible. But if this video has been helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more HD0 and digital related content and me doing stupid things before they're actually released to the public, 
then, you know, subscribe or something like that. And if you didn't already know, I do have a Patreon and you've probably noticed little pieces of bacon popping up all over the video as it's happened. Well, those are my Patreon patrons and they make this kind of stupidity possible for me to continue to do because I can't do it without them. They, they, uh, they make a, they make a bacon ninja cry sometimes at how much they support me. And if you want to be one of those, I do have a link in the description. I also have a link to buy me a coffee if you're just feeling like that. And I have a little bit of merch down there too if you feel like a shirt with breakfast meats on it. Because that's what most of my stuff is based on. Hence the name. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for hanging in there. Let me know how you get on with it. Do not ruin your only quad doing it. Please, please do not do that. And uh, yeah, if you have any trouble, just head over to my Discord or head over to HD Zero's Discord or head over to Betaflight's Discord because this is all kind of new stuff. So people should be talking about it there. And until next time, stay greasy and I'll catch you later. So what are we going to do with all these extra UARTs now that we don't have smart audio? I know one thing I'm not going to do and that's put GPS in my drone. Never, ever put GPS in my drones. Feels like I'm asking for trouble. You know how fast you're going. You know where you are. And eventually other people might know where you are. Ugh. Ugh. No thanks.